Assalamualaikum Anja. Yes Anja. Very well. Nice to see you. G. Nice to see you. Yes. So I'm very pleased to have all of you together for this uh, very important webinar. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, I think uh, it's time for us to start the uh, webinar. Uh, as you all, uh, my name is Fatihul Karim Siddiqui, Executive Director of Global Compact Network Pakistan. So, Bismillah Rahman Rahim, I think it's my proud privilege to moderate today's uh, very important webinar. Uh, the Global Compact Network Pakistan, as you know, is uh, uh, the flagship carrier of the United Nations Global uh, uh, Principles of uh, Ten Principles of United Nations Global Compact, which is uh, a sort of guideline for business uh, in order to attain social and economic sustainability. And I can say it with confidence that 22 years, ever since the Global Compact uh, was launched by the Secretary General, uh, it has grown uh, considerably. And today, uh, more than uh, 15,000 enterprises around the world are benefiting from the 10 principles of Global Compact by integrating them in their work culture. Uh, we had uh, very recently concluded a series of uh, webinars on 17 uh, sustainable development goals. And that was uh, a real opportunity for the network to acclimatize SDGs uh, in the corporate world. And we were able to collect uh, about uh, more than 50 professionals in the community of practice who are our ambassadors today in promoting SDGs. Similarly, we thought it will be the fittest of things now to start a series of discussions on the 10 principles of Global Compact because they preceded the SDGs and laid the foundation of a strong, sustainable foundation for business to grow and uh, prosper. Uh, it is uh, therefore my honor to, first of all, introduce the distinguished uh, panelist of today's uh, session. Uh, I have Mr. Zulfakar, who is a well-known uh, researcher and uh, uh, human rights activist, I will say, in Pakistan. He has been associated with Pilar, uh, one of the leading labor research uh, institution, which has uh, undertaken a lot of deep intensive studies into social and labor issues and is considered to be one of the pioneers in labor research. Uh, currently, uh, Mr. Zulfakar is the member of the Sindh Human Rights Commission and therefore has a big responsibility of promoting uh, human rights uh, through the commission, uh, not only to the uh, community, but to the corporate sector as well as the stakeholders. So I'm very uh, grateful to Zulfakar Sahib for having accepted our invitation to be a panelist in today's webinar. Uh, another uh, speaker panelist on the uh, list is uh, Marine, who is the uh, associated with the Women's Chamber of Commerce and Industry. Uh, she is a very important stakeholder uh, in uh, bearing the flag of human rights uh, across uh, the country, particularly among the women in Pakistan, and I'm privileged to have Marine with us uh, in this program. Uh, I'm also very equally privileged to have uh, Bushra Raza in this program. Uh, Bushra Raza needs no introduction to the professional HR professionals in Pakistan. She, she is a, a UNESCAP certified uh, trainer in the 10 principles of UN Global Compact. Uh, she has been associated with the profession of human resource and has worked with uh, multinational companies in Pakistan, uh, currently based in uh, UK. She is a member of the board of directors of Global Compact Network Pakistan, and I'm looking forward to very uh, interesting and important input in today's discussion. So as we start our webinar from the first principle of UN Global Compact, which is uh, which relates to human rights. 
just to give a background, there are ten principles of global compact. Two relate to human rights. Four relate to labor. Uh, three relate to environment, and uh, one relates to anti-corruption. And therefore, these ten principles are so wedded into each other that they form the foundation of uh, uh, sustainable, uh, socially responsible uh, foundation for business to grow. Uh, the first principle of uh, human rights uh, requires uh, business to protect and respect internationally proclaimed uh, human rights. And it is the responsibility of business not only to be aware of the internationally proclaimed human rights, but also to respect them and embed them in the culture of their organizations. So starting the discussion uh, with uh, Dr. Zulfakar, sir, I would request you to throw some light on what are the internationally proclaimed uh, human rights which business is expected to protect and respect. Uh, over to you, Zulfakar sahab. Uh, uh, thank you very much, uh, Fasi Saab. I'm really uh, uh, pleased to, to be part of this uh, conversation, a series of these seminars, and uh, I would really like to uh, start with the appreciating the efforts that the Global Compact Network in Pakistan and you as a personally are making to create an awareness on this quite important subject that uh, uh, we think we all need to put together our efforts to make uh, a mainstream agenda uh, in the country. Now, having said that, uh, if I can just uh, uh, very briefly talk about uh, what you asked, that what are the uh, internationally recognized or internationally proclaimed human rights? I think we need to very simply begin with it that uh, these uh, which actually, if we can trace back um, uh, with the history, then uh, you would have a look at the uh, Universal Declaration on uh, uh, Human Rights. So all the 30 uh, principles or all 30 articles of the UGHR should be considered as the, uh, at the, at the internationally proclaimed uh, human rights. Now, if we want to make it more simple within the context that uh, what we are discussing today, and um, uh, thank you very much for making it clear that we are just discussing or focusing on uh, only principle one, which is focusing on the human rights and keeping the rest uh, for another discussion. Otherwise, as you rightly mentioned, that these rights are actually interlinked. So even that can be interlinked with the labor rights. So all these 30 articles have uh, uh, been now translated into the basic uh, nine core, what we call the core conventions, human rights conventions. And I would say that uh, these are the basic rights, obviously starting with that, that everybody should be treated with uh, dignity, uh, uh, with, a, with a respect and the, the human rights, and also uh, with the basic freedoms. And these freedoms include all those freedoms which also interchange internally with uh, the rights which are mentioned in the labor rights. So uh, freedom of association, freedom of assembly, freedom of speech, so the, the basic fundamental principles that you uh, need to look into that and that have also been covered under the uh, what we call the ICCPR International Convention on Civil and the Political Rights. And the other set of the internationally proclaimed human rights have been covered and other covenant, uh, equally important covenant, uh, covenant on economic, social and cultural rights. And that's where, you know, most of these rights which we look at business, including that um, uh, rights at work, treatment uh, without discrimination and also these um, uh, rights which are included in the in the, in the core uh, labor rights they are part of this uh, uh, basic uh, social economic and cultural rights but at the same time also uh, uh, the uh, the CEDA also comes under the uh, the the main rights so uh, no discrimination against women child rights also comes in the international uh, um, proclaimed rights uh, uh, no slavery that's also part of the the international uh, uh, proclaimed rights so i would say all these rights that we've been discussing uh, are uh, we, we can assume to be very honest we can think about it are called the uh, proclaimed human rights so I would say that in the context of what we are discussing today, the businesses, because now the debate has gone beyond the traditional labor rights, which used to be the, uh, the only 
uh, requirement that businesses were required to comply on that now the business are required to kind of comply beyond these rights so uh, so the business if you want to do the business in today's world you really need to be careful you need to be mindful and you really need to have a mechanisms which actually take into account all these rights which are part of the uthr or which are part of these two conventions over to you फजी साहब आपका प्लीज अनम्यूट करें फजी साहब अनम्यूट करें फजी साहब काइंडली अनम्यूट प्लीज हेलो कैन यू हेयर मी नाउ जी जी फजी साहब प्लीज जी अब सो सकते प्लीज गो हेड ओ फिर हो गया यार योर वेरी इलेबोरेट इंट्रोडक्शन ऑफ द फर्स्ट प्रिंसिपल एंड एज यू राइटली सेड Uh, the first principle is a very widely uh, encompassing uh, principle uh, which reminds business of its responsibility toward the market toward the customer towards the consumers towards the employees and towards the society and stakeholders and therefore uh, it is a very uh, important uh, uh, preamble to the declaration of fundamental rights Uh, which business has to protect and respect uh, i will not turn to bushra uh, bushra has been associated with business and with uh, community and with uh, academia and i would like uh, her to throw some light on uh, what benefits she sees uh, human rights can bring to business and uh, adherence to human rights can uh, empower business to grow on a sustainable basis so bushra over to you bushra can you hear me i can't hear you yeah, yeah bushra we are having problem bushra we are having problem to uh, hear you am i audible now Yeah, 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 now yeah, you are. Yeah, yeah, now, 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 just now. Thank you so much. Honor to share. No, again, 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 problem. Am I audible now? Now you are. Yes, yeah, yes. Now, now, now you are. Yeah. Am I clear now? Am I audible? Yeah, go yes. ahead. Yeah, okay. go ahead. Uh, first of all thank you so very much uh, for allowing me to share the stage with mr kapoor shah and ms mary ulani who have actually given their uh, lives to building the corporate structures and uh, protecting the human rights in pakistan and promoting the positive image of pakistan internationally i think that united global uh, united nations global compact had a very strong objective of keeping uh, or uh, declaring human right as the first principle right under its declaration because yes it is the most important fundamental right of existence of humanity in the world and uh, now as for the business sector i think there is a strong connection which is not being really noticed between the financial and economic success of a company when it comes to human rights and i think this is the defining line between the developed and the developing countries when we talk about um their success and their development and we being uh, underdeveloped or still deprived of gaining success in the global market i strongly believe that uh, human rights is one subject which has been really talked about and thanks to united nations global compact i'm so uh, proud and privileged to be associated with this organization since its inception in pakistan uh, decades back and uh, i have actually seen the growth of uh, discussions and debates on human right activism in pakistan through this platform especially among the business sector uh, the point to ponder here is that uh, we all know that pakistan as a country uh, rates very low as far as human development index and human rights protection indexes are concerned and i feel that the responsibility now equally lies on the governments definitely as well as the corporate sector to start talking about this subject to start raising awareness of this subject amongst its employees at large 
uh, we have two major responsibilities when it comes to the human rights one is at the workplace and one is outside the workplace as a business concern and when we talk about at the workplace definitely it's about safety health conditions and personal practices that needs to be protected but i think that as a corporate sector we still feel quite scared of letting our employees knows of, uh, know about their rights we still have a fear to declare what their rights are and that is because we think that they might do something which is harmful for the organization actually it is the other way around if you educate your employees about their rights if you give them their due rights then only you can become an employer of choice when we talk about leading organizations in the multinational or national sector of pakistan these are those organizations who have definitely performed exceptionally well in the financial uh, arena or have gained a lot of profits but their most important tool of success are their employees their most important tool of their success is their uh, employees understanding of human rights and propagating the same it is high time for corporate sector in pakistan to embrace and actually create awareness about human rights among its employees through such discussions through internal discussions and through propagating this agenda right across the uh, right across to the senior management middle management lower management and even the contractual workers once we open to our people once we open to our employees and embrace their rights it is going to play magic for the organization which is unfortunately uh, not yet being much realized by the local corporate sector in pakistan uh, you know when i moved to the uk i could now clearly see the difference between the corporate culture in pakistan and after having established 70 successful startup businesses in the uk i could see where we stand different from each other these are the same people from our country and from other countries who are coming to the uk and setting up their businesses and uh, the differentiating among the differentiating factors the most leading one is the enforcement and acceptance of human rights at the grassroots level and uh, that really sets them apart as a developed nation as compared to our country i think we need more of mr zulfikar uh, shah's uh, type personalities in companies around we need more miss mary nilahi types vision in the companies around and we really need to push this across the employees because Uh, we we have to understand that by doing so we are not only making our organizations better we are actually taking this message across to our employees homes to their families to their children to their income generation that you see you have the right to speak you have the right to associate you have the right to respect others you have the right to dignify others you have the right to gain due return of your services if we start preparing our employees today towards this sector believe you me we are preparing the incoming generations towards it and one very most important uh, point that i would like to discuss here is that it is the combined effort of business sector and academia to start creating an understanding and consciousness of human rights among children why do we care about it when the employees join a company and when they come across a paper oh these are my rights and sometimes they don't even get that uh consciousness why don't we start educating our children at the grassroots level that yes these are the human rights that you have to follow and that is the impact that generations are going to make and i'm sure pakistani uh, business sector has come a long way in acceptance and understanding of human rights thanks to our exports and compliance regulations as well which has forced us sometimes to go and abide by uh, these um, code of conduct but once we start doing such partnerships between academia and the corporate sector i think we can make a very very large impact uh, that will span across employees to their families to their children and to their coming generations thank you so very much professor sahab thank you very much bashra i think uh, uh, you have very rightly uh, touched the very foundation of uh, uh, understanding the importance of human rights by business uh when you say that uh business is inherently linked with human rights and uh, there could could be there nothing better could be said about uh how important it was for business not only to integrate with society but also with uh, the academia in order to promote uh the dignity of human existence uh talking about uh uh dignity of man the constitution of pakistan 
guarantees dignity of man and woman uh, which is inviolable uh, marine i would now move to you and uh, uh, request you to shed some light on how you see human rights in the perspective of its application to uh, to 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 women in particular and to the society in general marine over to you bahut bahut shukriya bismillahir rahmanir rahim it's very kind of you to include me in this wonderful session in which i can also be learning from you all and also imparting some of our uh, knowledge and our experiences and sharing it with you all uh, it's uh, human rights has always been at the core of my existence let's put it like that and it was one of the reasons why i made the film uh, on the role of women uh, many years back it was entitled behind the veil and it was shown and uh, not only in pakistan but also abroad because it uh, it brought to light uh, the from the quran the rights of women and uh, uh, from the point of the un many of the uh, the things we talk about now uh, shed light uh, through the quran you know we have imbibed a number of these um, uh, these different principles which is really uh, important for uh, for human existence i think because only if you respect and give dignity to others can you respect yourself also because every human being has a conscience and it's very important to also feel good inside that yes you are you know elevating the other person or giving them the right uh, incentive let's say in work or in workplace and uh, caring for them and uh, looking at their uh, their side of the story as well you know so not only as as a boss but sometimes also as a colleague so uh, the women chambers uh, i would like to say have come a long way uh, they were in, basically uh, put together by begum salma ahmed the first uh, founder president of uh, the women chamber and then later uh, i must add to this that now there are 20 women chambers in pakistan and hina mansab khan who um, who had put together almost 10 chambers uh women chambers and uh, we believe very much that uh, uh, women should be empowered they should have freedom to you know um, uh, uh, to uh, uh, to have the right environment to work in um, they should get funding they should also be allowed to uh, travel and go uh, go in delegations because a lot of uh, there's a lot of impediment and a lot needs still to be done and um, Uh, because i'm talking from the chamber and business point of view and since the principle that uh, we are dealing with that business should support and respect the protection of international human rights which is the principle number 1 and and that basically it means to take voluntary action to make a positive contribution towards the protection and fulfillment of human rights which can be done through core business strategic social investment philanthropy public policy advocacy partnerships and other collective action now i would also like to add that i've been a member of the fpcci and i also have a, i'm also a convener for women development and uh, advocacy committee in which i would very much like to invite you for one session at some point and because a, a number of women business women owners are not really aware unless we make them aware that these principles have to work within their businesses they must have a code of conduct a policy commitment which should be embedded in their system so they can benefit they can uh, reap results they can teach uh, you know their employees also and help them and guide them so it's really important that uh, a session will uh, definitely help one one on the platform of fpcci so a number of businesses get to know and through my uh, committee which is dealing with women uh, business stakeholders also so uh, and other professionals even ngos so uh, that is one aspect i'd like to mention and uh, uh, i also am fully aware that if you do not respect human rights you, uh, you pose a threat to uh, your reputation Uh, you have, might have consumer by courts you might uh, be getting into a legal you know um, legal case uh, happening uh, maybe there will be adverse um, action from the government and even adverse uh, action from your investor who's uh, you know uh, trusting you and investing in you 
so which brings down very much reduced uh, productivity and morale of the employees so i really feel that all these uh, scenarios help if you uh, maintain a very stable uh, maybe you uh, through auditing through monitoring through checking tracking your performances of your um, of your businesses you um, sort of uh, see how your performance is happening with, within a business and uh, uh, these women have to be taught slowly and slowly getting on to that uh, side and there is still a lack of awareness there and it really needs to be um how do i put it uh, a number of workshops have to be happening to create that awareness and i'm glad that uh, you you are doing these different series and i will share it and i've already uh, put this whole uh, thing on my uh, whatsapp group so that uh, some of them can join in and learn about it and um, in this manner we try to teach them as well and impart uh, 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 knowledge which will be very good for them for the future generations to come not only the young entrepreneurs but also the seniors who are sometimes not aware that they need to but a number of them who are um, sort of uh, into manufacturing and the dealing with international clients they uh, definitely have knowledge of these uh, uh, human rights uh, principle number one that you mentioned so that's what i would like to say thank you aapki awaaz nahi aa rahi ji koshish aap unmute kare ab aa rahi hai aa rahi hai Uh, thank you very much uh, i think uh, uh, marine you shared very uh, uh, bright uh, uh, picture of uh, what is required and needed to promote human rights among women in particular and the role that you are playing through the women chamber is a very important role and it can play a vital part vital uh, influence on uh the most important uh, uh population sector of our country in order to be able to uh, not only uh, uh, embrace the human rights practices but also to educate and uh, um, train our uh, stakeholders in practicing uh, human right uh, in so i would like to come back to zulfaqar sahab and uh, uh, zulfaqar sahab you have been a very active uh, uh, human rights activist i would say and uh, there has been, there has been a business and human rights guideline uh, presented uh, approved by the united nations uh, in the year 2014 if i am right uh, Would you like to share some uh, important guidelines which business uh, should like to uh, follow in uh, protecting, respecting, and remedying uh, principles of uh, human rights as laid down in the UN guide guide uh, guideline? Please uh, over to you, Zulfikar uh, Sahab. uh now uh, thank you very much um, uh, fasi sir i think it was really very insightful uh, the discussion and the, uh, from bushra and uh, mahreen as well quite important points were raised uh, and i really kind of you know feel uh, uh, privileged i would say like you know to be proud that um, i am an activist a human rights activist so for us as any human rights activist i think this was very turning point uh, when this whole debate around the ungps concluded with the with the ungps actually um, uh, and uh, why i would like to say that is because there were uh, obviously we all been campaigning for the compliance of these uh, four human rights as well as the uh, core uh, labor rights and um, um, both of both both the categories of the core human rights as well as the core uh, labor rights are uh, are uh, what is the our binding uh, arrangements our binding conventions our binding requirements while the on the other hand the uh, uh, advantage or disadvantage of these uh, guiding principles uh, were that these were not uh, binding but uh, these were uh, uh, i would say the consensus document so i think it's uh, very important to understand the essence of the 
in GPs that uh, uh, because in, in today's world, dealing with all these challenges, uh, one hand, you would have these rights uh, enshrined in your constitution and the UDHR and uh, most of the other international instruments. But when it comes to the compliance, it's quite important and it becomes very challenging. So I think the advantage that the UNGPs provided was this consensus. It means that the businesses agreed to this. So this was actually one of the most uh, stakeholders that agreed. And if we look at only a single most important guidelines, that's quite important. The rest actually rests over there. That's basically the due diligence. That you really need to conduct a proper due diligence. You need to have a due diligence in place. And uh, to do the two things through the due diligence. One is that obviously you would avoid that uh, while you conduct a business, whether it's a new business, whether it's a continued business, you would like to avoid the abuse or violation of the, the human rights. So that's one of the key objects of the due diligence. And the second is obviously still there could be the possibilities. Obviously, when you do the business, there are always possibilities with this extending set of the rights. Now, uh, as we mentioned that now it's not no more uh, eight or ten for labor rights, but it's a huge uh, um, set of the human rights. So you would really like to put into place the mechanisms. So if something happens wrong or there is a possibility of uh, uh, some some violation of the rights, you need to have an immediate remedy in place. So I would say that in today's world, it's really quite important for businesses globally as well as for the business in Pakistan. And what we saw actually in case of, for example, we are just having this seminar two to three days after the 10th anniversary of the Baldi of HG fire. And what we saw as uh, as the business uh, entity, for example, in that case, the uh, kick, for example, they ended up paying six point five million dollars as a compensation. And this was the largest out of settlement compensation paid by any company. So if you don't uh, be vigilant, if you don't have a proper due diligence in place, it's really very, very certain, not only for the labor rights. Obviously, there was no replacement of the human rights that were incurred, but at the same time, the losses that the business has to face, both in terms of their image damage, but at the same time, monetary terms. So I think it's really quite important that the UNGPs are actually, uh, actually under stood in a true spirit and then they are implemented and the beauty of these UNGPs and then the rest of the guidelines is that voluntarily these are consensus so all people have agreed so while we would keep demanding the government to protect the human rights but we would really like the businesses to, to respect these human rights and then the both entities agree to that that in case of the violation we should have a very efficient and effective kind of remedy in place so I would stop here and if you have any additional question, I would be happy to. Thank you very much. I think uh, it was a good explanation of uh, the guidelines given by the in human rights. Uh, I will turn to Bushra. Uh, you have spent a considerable time in the corporate sector. Uh, would you like to throw some light on what uh, uh, actual steps you must have taken within your organization uh, to promote uh, human rights? Uh, could you sh shed some uh, light on that aspect, Bushra? Over to you. Bushra, Bushra, Bushra we cannot hear you. We can't hear you, Bushra. Hear you. Yeah. Uh, first of all, I think that the consciousness, understanding, and education of human rights is uh, must be a top-down approach in an organization. First of all, it has to be embraced by the organizational leadership, which starts from its board of directors, its owners in our local organizations, its key stakeholders, its head of the departments. And then it should be um, deep-rooted to the organization. The top leadership has to be taken into confidence in terms of promoting human rights within the organization for the benefit of itself, for the benefit of its financial performance, for the benefit of its employee performance. Once you are, uh, once your top management is convinced of this idea, uh, and I'm, I'll again quote Ms. Marine Lai that companies who are export oriented, they have to follow uh, certain regulations and guidelines of the uh, their uh, export oriented countries in order to uh, qualify to uh, send their products over there but uh, even uh, 
the, the company is a local one and the top leadership is convinced of the fact that human rights is a critical factor to organizational success then only it can be promoted to other employees having said that once the um, top management is convinced then maybe the hr department has to be the torch bearer in actually implementing the strategy of uh, educating employees about human rights in order to ensure that human rights are being practiced by the organization in order to ensure that whatever has been written in the documents are being practiced in letter and spread i know it cannot happen overnight but there can always be baby steps that can be taken an organization which is not actually following the basic human rights since a long time converting that organization into a human rights compliant organization is a difficult task it needs a lot of engagement at all levels but once you start the process uh, believe you me you can see results very positively in organizations that i have worked so far in pakistan we have actually practiced the uh, uh, core of human right where we start from paying due salaries to the employees at the right time and then start respecting and dignifying their performance and contribution to the company once you start making feel employees valuable and happy while they are working with you you will have the highest employee retention level you will have the highest performance levels you will see happy employees actually wanting to contribute to your company rather you will see um, other people who are not a part of your organization that who would like to join your company to be in that streamline so once the top management is convinced the middle management is convinced then maybe the hr department can take the lead in spreading the message across at all levels in actually rectifying your existing practices in defining new processes which can engage your employees towards uh, following the human rights at all level maybe sometimes you have to uh, i strongly believe that it should be done in a very friendly environment it should not be done as a policing on the organizations in which one of the parties between employees and the employer have to be charged no it has to be a combined effort uh, it has to be deep rooted in organizations publications i have seen very few organization which actually paced uh, the human rights principles in their production areas or in that prominent places where employees can actually read them we do have them in documents we have very good law enforcement or human rights enforcement documents available by the government of pakistan by associations like united nations global compact but uh, i've only seen them uh, in the board rooms maybe and maybe in the office of the ceo or the hr heads i think these should be uh, made practical and aware at the grassroots level to the worker side they should also be aware what are their rights and how can they exercise them look the another education level has to be done at the side of the workers because most of them are not that much educated to understand their human rights and we uh, may face some uh, offensive actions against it and which every company is scared of that they may go on strikes they may stand against us they may present a charter of demands which cannot be met uh, but i i know fasiza you have successfully met and even mr akram has successfully met uh, so many charter of demands while you were in the corporate sector and uh, you actually have set an example for hr people like me to follow where you have met an agreement between the employee and the employer that they both have to follow human rights with utmost dignity with utmost respect for each other and for the benefit of the organization so we have to find common goals we have to find mutual benefits for both the parties in the execution of its human rights strategy that only can easily blend the top management the lower management and the workers into the uh, framework of human rights execution and we have successfully pitched this model in organization in pakistan and i'm so happy to report that employees were we were so open to our employees that they were not only happy to discuss their problems they understood the crisis situation of our organization as well they were ready to actually work extra for us when we needed them because they knew we are fair to them and so automatically gradually they also became became fair to us so once you provide a level playing field which is a difficult thing uh, i totally understand that but once a level playing field uh, is given to both the parties a win win situation is created for both the parties i don't feel there is any i don't have any doubts in implementing the human rights strategy successfully in a pakistani organization great thank you, thank you very much i think uh... uh a few very important comments you made uh is really 
uh, very uh, significant uh, when you say that uh, human rights, uh, hu- uh, human resource management is the torch bearer of human rights in an organization. Uh, I have uh, on the panel Mr. Akram, I can see him here, uh, who happened to be uh, the head of HR in uh, one of Pakistan's most leading Japanese automobile company and uh, his organization uh, has, uh, is known for having developed industrial relations model uh, in terms of uh, their interaction with employees. Akram Sahib, would you like to uh, uh, very briefly uh, spell some of the uh, actions you uh, remember having taken uh, for promoting human rights in your organization? Yeah, Fadi Sahib, thank you very much for uh, sparing me for a few minutes. Um, it has been a very uh, uh, privileged activity for me while I was serving in Park Motors Limited. The idea to have a win-win conditions, as Jibushra just mentioned, has been enormous and has paid us a lot. Literally, we gave an equal right to the workers and uh, the uh, so much so when they were s- sending us a charter of demand at the same time we were also able to give our charter of demand i mean management charter of demand to the workers so it was a good negotiation technique but at the same time what happened that the people of from cbs side they understood what management wants and what and we understood what they want. So we reached uh, on the agreements uh, amicably uh, to sort it out our uh, issues uh, with them. Now, what happened in that in, the, in this uh, scenario? Having done this exercise, we were able to enhance our productivity. This was one aspect. The second aspect was that this act- productivity improvement was not theoretical. It was all practical uh, improvement. We were able to show them the improvement in productivity on a monthly basis. And send, so there was a chart showing the improvement in productivity on a monthly basis at the end of the year, how much they were able to improve the productivity. So what was the gain of the productivity? Okay, then we decided, okay, uh, okay let's share the uh, uh, gain of productivity. Now, it was un- impossible if it was uh, only uh, a one side game uh, with the organization earned and from this earning we shared the uh, the, the benefit uh, among the workers as well so this was uh, a gain uh, from both sides as busha was mentioning and i was really recalling those incidents when we were able to receive uh, very good orders from various uh, organization in pakistan and uh, uh, then we convinced management, convinced the, the CBA people to help us out. So we were able to uh, achieve the target, uh, the heavy target. So uh, CBA official, they used to work till late night on shop floor just to make sure that the order is met. And uh, we were able to produce the, uh, the, the right quality of uh, products uh, for the our, uh, for, for government of Pakistan, for Pakistan army and other uh, things like that. Now, this is a positive side. Sometime when the business was down and we were unable to bear the, the, the whole load uh, of, the, of the people and the various uh, issues, we again called people uh, of, from CBA and mentioned the whole situation in front of them, that this is the, our position. We are unable to carry out this load anymore for the so many uh, a, a months to come. So they were able to help us out. And we were... Uh, looking into that uh, scenario at the time, and we were able to uh, reduce our workforce, or if not workforce, where we were to able to reduce our uh, reduce our expenses. And uh, CBA, along with all the workers, were uh, supporting us. So this was un- uh, it, it was impossible. Uh, had, whether we uh, had we uh, not done the fair practices, fair human practices, human uh, right, right practices with them. So they understood we were fair with them and they were fair with us at all the time to come. And this practice is still, I'm happy to uh, report that it's still practice, uh, this, uh, this practice is ex- existing in Hino Park Motors Limited, that management and the CBA are both 
uh, having the fair practices uh, towards uh, their each other rights. So this is uh, uh, this, this fundamental principle was laid down long time back, almost 30 plus years back. They are still being practiced in uh, Hino Park Motor Limited, and we are getting the right results even now in Hino Park Motor Limited. So well, I will endorse uh, what Busha was saying. I will endorse what uh, Marin was saying, and I will also endorse what Zulfikar Shah was mentioning. That yes, when you are recognizing the human uh, rights and you are trying to uh, having the uh, people on right track with you, they will always respond. We educated them, we told them that yes, we are respecting you, and not only by words, think, but as Busha uh, was mentioning. Yeah. Mm -hmm. As Bushwa was mentioning, not in the, uh, uh, not should be on the, yeah, on the wall of, uh, the, uh, on the wall of uh, uh, boardroom mm -hmm. or in the, uh, in the in the room of uh, HR department, but practically should be practicing uh, pr practice on shop floor, and that's what we did, and it we were very very happy uh, in uh, and we enjoyed the relationship with the with the with the with the, uh, with the uh, labor organization, and uh, it was very uh, wonderful experience. And I would always uh, say that Hino Park was the second or third organization who endured the, the global compact network when it came into being in 2005. We were second or third organization uh, who uh, endured the, the principle and adopted the all principle. And not only adopted them, but we made sure that the all principle, 10 principles are channelized uh, through our policies and our practices in Hino Park Motors Limited, and that paid us, that paid us a very good dividend in Hino Park Motors Limited. That I'm, I'm the, I'm the very uh, witness of this all benefits which we uh, again uh, achieved in Hino Park Motors Limited. So, Fasisab, over to you now. I hope I have answered the question. Thank you very much, Akram Sahib. I think uh, uh, you very candidly spoke about uh, some of the practices uh, proved very uh, effective in promoting. Uh, good relations among employers and workers in your in your organization, and as far as I know, the uh, entire industrial relations model of your company was based on three principles: uh, uh, transparency of information, uh, the uh, respect for management and workers and to each other, yes. and thirdly, uh, social dialogue for resolving yes. disputes. Yes. That's right. In order to uh, to to protect and respect uh, fundamental human rights. Now I am entering into the last phase of uh, uh, I will not say uh, question but reviews by the panelists. So uh, first of all, I am turning to Marine. Yes. To, uh, yes, Marine. I'd like to give uh, two or three points. I'd uh, like yeah. to expand on. Uh, Akram Sahab's point, which was very valid, and also uh, Bushra uh, made a very important point. Usi ko aage lete hue main add karna chahungi ki jo log businesses mein ya exports ki taraf hain, to agar aap apni employees ke saath acha bartao rakte hain, unko time pe salary jaise wo keh rahe the de rahe hain, unko aur bhi benefits dete hain, unko saal ke end mein koi provident fund ya koi aisi bonus. मिल जाए कोई छुट्टियां उनकी एक महीने की पूरी मिल जाए जिससे वो रिलैक्स करें या या अगर विमेन हैं तो उनको डे केयर सेंटर्स प्रोवाइडेड हो और वो वो भी लीव ले सकें इफ दे फॉर एग्जांपल इफ दे प्रेग्नेंट विमेन तो ऑल दीस थिंग्स यू नो रेडी ऐड टू अ सॉर्ट ऑफ ऑर्गेनाइजेशंस रेपुटेशन के जी ये तो बड़े फेयर और बड़ा अच्छा उनका किरदार है विद द एम्प्लॉइज and what uh, what it brings about is that it will bring about uh, especially for exports they can come up with new products and they can innovate new products they can also value a value add on some uh, items that can become even better their services would become better they will find uh, they will on their own work hard to find access to new markets and in this manner, you will strengthen your social license and you will be a valued member of the community and the society. So that is one uh, point I wanted to expand upon. And the second is that training your employees because they come from different stratas of society is very uh, important to bring them on so one yeah, page yeah, to some extent. Okay, well, Aap, uh, yeah, it's very important yeah, to bring yeah, them on. Yeah, well, 
ji it's uh, it's okay. very important to bring them on one page so that they are able to uh, be well trained and well versed with the human rights principle number 1 and they also understand and they can also contribute in in a, a more a better manner and uh, they can be part of the human uh, rights policy which is uh, practiced by the hr departments normally in organizations um, and the third point i'd like to mention is an effective uh, uh, in the remedy part that effective communication and effective jaise kehte hain na ji mechanism hona chahiye ki agar kisi ko koi grievance hai to wo aapke paas aaram se le aaye aur usko confidentiality bhi di jaye ki aaram se us cheez ko aap तय कर लें आपस में और डिस्कस कर लें विदाउट एनी फर्दर डिस्प्यूट तो ये भी बहुत जरूरी होती है कि देर शुड बी अट लाइन इन एन ऑर्गेनाइजेशन इफ दे हैव अ ग्रीवेंस दे कैन कम टू यू एंड डिस्कस विद यू एंड एंड द मैटर शुड बी रिजॉल्व एमिकबली तो उससे भी बहुत फर्क पड़ता है और चीजें बढ़ती नहीं आगे और यू ऑल्सो शो इन मेनी वेज के भाई यू आर सपोर्टिंग द ह्यूमन राइट प्रिंसिपल नंबर वन थैंक यू thank you very much uh, i think uh, very uh, important points that you have brought forth zulfiqar uh, shah uh, sahab are you are you online yes sir yes sir very much uh, uh, the last intervention i would like you to make is in your capacity as the member of uh, uh, sindh human rights commission what is the commission doing to promote human rights in sindh and uh, what is the way forward that you foresee uh, uh well uh, uh, uh sir uh, just to highlight mission very briefly just to three points uh, based on this discussion one is that uh, this moral that all these human rights uh, are part of the international conventions or the constitution of pakistan are morally binding that the business should comply but the second point is actually evidence which mohammad akram saab has highlighted i think it's quite important i would suggest your organization to document as a case study that you have an evidence in your country very much in karachi that where you can present that how this can actually benefit you and third is that kind of you know this increasing requirement at international level that it's not only now in pakistan and all these uh, conventions or principles if you look at these 10 principles of uh, un compact these are the similar one which are part of the gsp plus these are the similar one which are part of this international legislation that's taking place say starting with uh, uh, un anti slavery law uh, going back to uh, france now in germany and you know other scandinavian countries so if you really want to interconnect your business if you want to do the exports that's quite important then you really need to have that uh, kind of in mind that is required now coming up to this in the human rights commission it's really a very important and unique body unique body in a way that we are a commission which we are funded by the government of pakistan the government of sin so in one way we are a government uh, body but at the same time we are established under a law so it this in the human rights uh, law uh, 2011 Uh, which provides us as a like you know independent body so it's an independent we receive funds from the government but we operate totally independent and it's headed by a former judge justice majda rizvi saiba uh, she is the former or uh, the first uh, female judge of high court in pakistan so the commission has also that kind of a credibility headed by her and we have two members which come uh, as retired session judges these are the two members which can conduct inquiries which can go into the kind of you know uh, 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 complaint mechanisms and there are two members which comes from the provincial assembly they are nominated by the the speaker of this in the assembly they take care of the required legislation and policy related aspects which commission recommends there are two members which come as a human rights experts or i would say that human rights activist and are currently i am one of them and our role is mainly to create all these interlinkages for example the interlinkage between commission and your organization or any organization so i think commission in a way is very unique and we currently also been tackling particularly during the covid we had to tackle uh, several uh, uh, complaints regarding the non payment of wages non payment of uh, uh, various uh, uh, compensation so the labor rights uh, complaints we are also tackling 
and our way is obviously this is an independent uh, uh, commission so investigate it properly not to go into public very confidential and you know um, uh, also take care of the businesses and we really been kind of you know in touch with businesses as it was very kind to have some of the meetings with you so i think we really look forward that if we are looking at the ungps or even the global compact if we are looking for a credible uh, ideal thank you sir हेलो आपकी आवाज पास रही है यस सर ओके सो थैंक यू वेरी मच जुल्फकार साहब आई थिंक वेरी इंटरेस्टिंग एंड इंफॉर्मेटिव माय लास्ट क्वेश्चन विल बी टू बश्रा बश्रा एज ए बिजनेस एसोसिएट इन द कॉर्पोरेट सेक्टर and as a uh, human right uh, promoter uh, in your capacity as director of the global compact network uh, board uh, what message you would you like to give to business uh, as to what concrete action they can take to promote human rights go to busha busha can't hear you Yeah, can you hear me now? Yeah. Now, now, now it's okay. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I was saying that thank you so much, Mr. Sir, for giving me this um, opportunity to actually express our thoughts on this uh, uh, great platform. Uh, what I believe is that actually I have to make two points very uh, clear that must be taken note by the corporate sector in Pakistan. Uh, that let's start talking about humans. let's start giving respect to each other let's start creating respect for ourselves and others around uh, once we have this belief and concept in mind uh, we can actually uh, have a trickling effect of our consciousness to all other areas of our operations <laughs> and uh, to miss marie nilahi i would definitely i would really request her to please work on improving the participation of women in leading roles in pakistan we have a uh, very very high potential of uh, qualified intelligent and uh, uh, such females who can create a larger organizational impact like you people are really focusing on promoting women entrepreneurship and organizations uh, in the pakistan please uh, i would request that i'm sure you people are doing a great job uh, but please continue to produce more women leadership across organizations in pakistan uh, there is a glass ceiling effect which is still exist when it comes to women attaining top positions in organizations and uh, this glass ceiling effect i think can also be equally addressed by women as we expected from men so if we encourage females more and more females to come forward and take leadership roles i think it is going to be a defining step towards promoting human rights across organizations as well because we as females uh, build families groom children and uh, we have the capacity and capability to convince our management our leadership as well as the workers to propagate and to um, inherent the principles of human rights into our lives within the organization as well as outside the organization right to the corporate sector in pakistan uh, let's talk about human rights let's speak up let's not discuss this chapter in our meeting rooms but let's go out of our rooms and discuss it with our employees at large let's hold discussions on it and from the platform of zone global compact i really wish we could organize a seminar on Uh, human rights and maybe mr dulpatar alisha or ms marine like can address school children college children university children or people who are getting vocational trainings in institutes before they come into the fold of uh, uh, employment they are very well aware of the human rights that they have uh, that they have and they have to execute as part of their for organizations uh, the leadership and the workers have to work together to promote this concept promote this phenomena and uh, let's uphold the image of pakistan as a human rights compliant nation in the global arena it is the dire which is a very important need of pakistan to grow and prosper in the international world. thank you so much thank you very much mushra uh, i think uh, uh, i would like to thank the part- the panelists in particular for their 
very useful input uh, the take away from today's discussion uh, as i see it is very very straight forward and simple uh, respect human rights as an individual as a person as a business entity and promote it under the sphere of your influence to every organization every individual and your community which is under your sphere of influence so that the message can go as far as possible as intense as possible as deep as possible it will take time it needs patience it needs perseverance it needs constant efforts but nevertheless it has to come from inside and it has to conquer the minds of people so i am looking forward that the global compact uh, subsequent uh, uh, webinars on the remaining nine principles will be equally uh, vibrant and equally informative for our participants and member organizations and community at large i would like to thank each one of you for your uh, wonderful uh, input and your very penetrating insight into the issues and challenges related to the problems of human rights but uh, as all of us have shown the optimism there is always uh, uh, plenty of room for uh, any space for widening our influence and as long as we are active in our uh, in our uh, attempt to uh, respect and promote human rights there is no reason why it will continue to spread as a public message to people around so thank you very much once again and looking forward to see you uh, soon in one of our uh, subsequent programs thank you very thank much thank you so much thank you so much for this sab and thank you all the speakers also thank you thank, thank you very much thank you very much thank you